So I would love to introduce you to Bartu Bosna. Bartu will be talking about improving privacy in video conferencing with background blur and virtual backgrounds. And we're really excited for this presentation. Bartu is a full stack software developer at Liongate AG. He develops intuitive and useful web applications, and he has experience with PHP, SQL, Node, TypeScript, Angular, and more. And Bartu is passionate about developing modern web UIs to generate business value for clients and believes that UX and optimized usability is key to that. So welcome, Bartu. Hi, Jess. Thank you for the introduction. Um, as you've already introduced me, um, there's really no need, but I also would like to say a few opening sentences. Um, uh, my story with Big, Big Blue Button didn't actually start with uh, with me developing and contributing to the project, but um, actually by using it at, actively at my university. Um, I am a relatively recent graduate, so my university life um, also took a hit with the pandemic. And as a student, I was pretty clueless about how I was going to communicate with my lecturers and interact with them, and quite scared too, because uh, I was a student that learned a lot during a lecture. Uh, and our emails obviously weren't great communication tools when it came to lectures, and uh, it came nowhere close to being at a lecture hall and interact with, interacting with the lecturers. Um, however, at the time, we used Moodle actively, and um, as Fred mentioned earlier, uh, Big Blue Button is actively used in a lot of Moodle instances, uh, and that's where I met Big Blue Button for the first time, actually. It provided a great opportunity uh, for my studies during such a difficult time. Uh, and at, at that moment, I had no idea that I would contribute to such a great project in the future. So it's great. It's a great feeling to give back uh, to the community who has provided uh, me with such a great tool in the past. So thanks, everyone, for making such a great uh, project happen. Right. So who are we at Liongate? Uh, we are a consulting company uh, based in Munich, Germany, with our two offices located in Rattingen and Munich, both in Germany. Um, we provide custom cloud solutions for our clients. And as you can see on your screens, uh, our clients come from many different industries. Therefore, many of them have different needs and things uh, need to be tailored for them specifically. As one of our main focuses, we also operate an online teaching platform uh, where we use Big Blue Button. Um, and I will also show that platform uh, in the following slides as uh, we already have um, a version of Big Blue Button with the virtual background and virtual uh, blur enabled. So what is the challenge and how did we tackle it? Well. Um, at the time of looking at the challenge, um, officially Big Blue Button didn't support virtual backgrounds or background blur. Um, it is still um, officially not released, but it is planned to be releasing with 2.4. Um, on the other hand, uh, competitors, and by competitors I mean uh, platforms such as Zoom, Jitsi, Microsoft Teams, and Skype uh, already support a feature for background blur and virtual backgrounds. So we also saw that there is demand for it, as we've heard from our customers and also uh, the GitHub issues of Big Blue Button. Um, but we had very big questions. So where do we begin? Uh, how does this uh, virtual background thing blur work? What exactly do we need? At the time, we had no experience with solving such a problem. And also, we didn't have experience working with Big Blue Button as a contributor as well. So how did we tackle it? Well, the first thing to focus could be quoted as, others have done it, don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, nevertheless, it's still a big challenge when starting off, especially finding out where to begin. Uh, firstly, we read through the issue dis discussions on Big Blue Bun's GitHub, and so that there are mentions of using libraries such as uh, BodyPix, uh, MediaPipe, and TensorFlow. And these were completely foreign to us at that time. Um, BodyPix, unfortunately, wasn't. Uh, using a performant model, I'm saying unfortunate because it could have been the easiest model to integrate into Big Blue Button. Um, so we looked at other alternatives, and during our search for alternatives, we saw a mention of two very important projects, namely uh, Jitsi's integration of virtual background, uh, and also a link to where they have been inspired from, uh, which is a library. Um, it's, it's a repository made by a GitHub user, Volcomix. Um, and he made a great repository that we could also use in our projects. Both Jitsi and Big Blue Button are now uh, profiting from this um, in a technical sense. Uh, seeing a successful implementation done by Jitsi, it made us focus on adapting and implementing their approach to Big Blue Button. 
um, we hadn't contributed to Big Blue Button, so we also had to spend our time and effort into studying the source code and the implementation uh, for Big Blue Button. Implementing into the Big Blue Button HTML5 client. Uh, firstly, uh, well, in the end, we decided to follow Jitsi's approach, as I mentioned earlier, and we had to use Google Media Pipe meet segmentation model. Uh, this model was offered as a TF flight model only, uh, and at the time of integration, uh, TensorFlow JS library, which um, offers a lot of uh, ease of use for JavaScript developers, uh, barely supported TF flight models. Um, and there was a separate library for it, uh, but unfortunately it was in alpha and I couldn't get it to work with Big Blue Button. It is, as far as I'm aware, it's still in alpha. Uh, the model we used is from early January uh, before Google switched the model from Apache license version two to Google Terms of Service. So there shouldn't be any uh, licensing issues as the version we're using was open source at the time we took it. Um, as our approach was to follow Jitsi and therefore Volcomics, uh, and build a TF flight model into WebAssembly. Um, you can see the, the steps for this uh, on your screen. And also more on this could be found on Volcomics repository, uh, which is also found on the readme file for our pull request. Uh, the WebAssembly code could be loaded and read easily just like any other resource on Big Blue Button. So uh, we had to provide a new meet you connection handler. So a new endpoint on Big Blue Button. Uh, to provide the WebAssembly file with the required headers for proper loading, because um, the file, the MIME type was not supported by Meteor out of the box, so we had to uh, provide the proper MIME type. Um, after loading the models in the WebAssembly file, we could then use them to manipulate the camera input and draw on a, on a canvas element. So I will show you this really simple diagram. Um, it is extremely simplified, um, but you can see uh, what we do is we load the WebAssembly file and the TF Lite model uh, in our service. This whole uh, red box is what I call a uh, virtual background service. It's a class. And then we apply the selected background effect onto the user camera stream. And then uh, very simply, we return the stream with the manipulated video input. Uh, this is very, very simple. Uh, as a side note, also, uh, we have two models. Uh, one of them is the regular one, and the other one is only used when SIMD is enabled. And you can enable SIMD on Google Chrome. I'm not sure if uh, other Chromium browsers support it, but as far as I know, Firefox does not support SIMD yet. So uh, going into a bit more detail, there are two key functions. Um, the first block in the previous slide also initializes the virtual background service as it is loading the model. Um, this Initialization is done by a function called quit virtual background service. And as a response, we have an instance of virtual background service class instance. Um, and during this initial initialization process, we have uh, virtual elements to do our processing off screen and bind event handlers. Uh, the second function here is start effect, um, which is a member function of virtual background service. Um, and in order to call this function successfully, we need the video stream of the user. And the stream that is passed in must be uh, of type media stream. And once we have the stream, we can use same, uh, some local functions uh, to do the magic using the model and pass the manipulated stream back to where start effect function um, has been called from. Uh, for a video preview, this is very simple. Uh, we just replace the HTML5 video object uh, source, uh, sorry, excuse me, HTML5 video element source object uh, with our manipulated stream. Um, things are a little bit more complicated when it comes to using the stream to share it with the other users on the conference, uh, which I will also get to soon. So how do we show it to the user? Well, after we receive the manipulated stream, we can replace the stream of an HTML5 video element, as I mentioned before, to show the result locally to the user. However, this is not enough if we want to share our manipulated track uh, to the other users in the conference. So what do we do? Uh, when the user selects a virtual background, we save the user preferences in the application state. So the, one, the ones uh, here that are familiar with React and state management, uh, we have states and props that uh, take care of uh, the state management and some functions to uh, manipulate things around. Um, afterwards, when the user decides to share their camera, we replace the WebRTC track uh, during initial call to instantiate WebRTC connection in case virtual background information exists. Uh, which is the information that we stored earlier about what the user selected. 
Uh, this happens in the video provider component. If virtual background information doesn't exist, uh, WebRTC peer connection with the user camera stream is instantiated instead. So no manipulation, just directly uh, the user camera stream. Uh, almost everything I've been explaining can be done in the video preview component, as you can soon see in the screenshots. Uh, there are multiple backgrounds available for selection, including a blur effect. Uh, we can disable the effect by either going back to the video preview um, or directly from the list item menu by clicking on our name under our camera box, which I will also show. I'm almost 100% certain that uh, a lot of you don't know that there is a menu under the camera box uh, because I also didn't know when I started uh, developing. Um, it is also possible to re-enable the effect through the same menu and also enable a blur effect in case the video preview component has been disabled. Virtual background feature also supports multiple camera streams at the same time, which I will also show during my demonstration soon. And we have some configuration settings uh, for when you deploy it on your servers. Um, there's also fallback. Um, so if you don't have these settings, um, there is default uh, hard-coded stuff in the code, so it will not break your installation. Um, there are multiple new parameters that can be adjusted on settings.yaml file related to the virtual background feature. Um, it is possible to entirely disable the feature as well by setting enable to false. Um, it is possible to change the images that you use and use an external directory for the source of the images as well. And the documentation link can be also found on the pull request. So these are the two screenshots that I was mentioning before. On the left side, you can see um, with the thumbnails, so there's this X, uh, which is to disable the effect. Uh, the first image is the blur, and the remaining three are the default backgrounds we have. And going back to the previous uh, slide, there's this show, show thumbnails flag. So if we disable that, if you set it to false, then we'll see a drop down menu like this. So in case you guys don't want to show um, the images like this, and you don't want to deal with thumbnails, then you can just use this drop down menu instead. So um, I will share a demo now uh, from uh, our platform, Vicol. And in a second. So hopefully you guys can see uh, my screen. So I will click share my webcam. And I actually have three <laughs> cameras connected to my uh, computer right now. So I'll just set this to medium. And for the first one, let's select a house setting. So there's this house setting, and I will click share. So here the WebRTC uh, track gets replaced. And then now we can see that the background is working. And you can see it's real time. I can just move around and it's uh, reacting to it. But what if I add a second camera? Can I do that? And the answer is yes. So I'll choose my phone, which I have on my hand. Um, and I will choose the blur effect for that. So I'll start sharing. And yeah, my name is Douglas Alicia for this demo. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can see I have two streams going on and both have different effects. So it's possible to have different effects on different streams. I can also now click on this menu and click disable, which will disable seamlessly uh, the background effect that I had earlier. And I can just click it back, enable it, and it is as easy as that. I can just uh, do that and I can also disable this one. So it is very simple to use. Um, um, so yeah, uh, that is pretty much uh, the demonstration for it. And I can stop all tracks. Going back to the slides, um, coming to conclusions. So in the end, uh, the feature is supported on multiple browsers and platforms, including Android and Mac OS devices. So from the reports we've seen, and I've also seen it myself, um, the feature doesn't function on Mac OS Safari, but it does on Chrome on Mac OS. Uh, I unfortunately don't have a MacBook, so I couldn't test it uh, during the development process. So in case anyone wants to look into it and give feedback, I'd appreciate it. Um, we currently use the feature, as you've seen, on our teaching platform, Vicol, uh, where I've shown you the demonstration. You can also go there and try it out yourself. The link will be on the final um, slide. Um, the pull request is available on GitHub, so you can uh, you feel free to just go check it out, write a comment, uh, ask questions, or give feedback. I'd really appreciate that. 
Um, unfortunately, iOS is not supported due to platform-specific limitations. Uh, and the limitation is due to Safari on iOS not accepting a video element as an input source uh, for a function we use uh, to manipulate the stream. Uh, and the function is specifically called uh, draw image on canvas rendering context 2D. Um, if in the future the, this feature supports video input as an input parameter, the feature could be easily enabled. Uh, it's just uh, it's as e it's easy as flipping a switch. We'll just have to uh, remove a flag, a platform flag on the source code. So, oh. um, any questions? Um, I unfortunately don't have very specific CPU measurements, uh, but um, I have seen, well, I have um, a relatively strong computer. I have an i7 8th gen, and with SIMD enabled, um, I get up to... 25-30% uh, CPU usage uh, on Chrome. So it is uh, pretty good with SIMD. Uh, and on Firefox, if I remember correctly, without the SIMD, it was similar, but I found the frame rate and the performance better with Chrome and SIMD enabled. Um, Hans Ulrich asks, can you use a green screen to get a better keying quality? Um, I unfortunately don't have a green screen, but I have seen from presentations during this week that people already use green screen without this feature um, and set their own virtual backgrounds. So it could be possible, but it needs to be tested. I haven't tested it myself. Okay, uh, Leon asks, how strong is CPU and bandwidth involved? Does it break down performance in the browser from students? Um, it's only run locally. So if you're running the effect on your system, uh, the effect gets transmitted to the other users, but it will not be run on their computer. So all the calculations are done on the client side. So it's only your computer that is getting affected, like the, the client that is uh, changing their background. Okay. Um, Rymar asks, does that need an NVIDIA GPU? Uh, it does not need a GPU if you're using CPU rendering. Okay, uh, fantastic. And there's a bunch of uh, really supportive comments in the chat and on YouTube uh, showing support for this feature. Uh, Bartu has uh, put up his contact information. You can contact him at bartu.bosna at liongate.de. Um, and there is a link to the virtual background demo uh, right there on the screen. Uh, thank you so much, Bartu, for presenting. And I'm sure Bartu will be sticking around in the chat if you have any more questions for him that you think of. And yeah, so I would love to introduce our next presenter in this session, who is Klaus Herbert. Um, Klaus, feel free to turn on your camera and your microphone and we'll get your presentation loaded. Thank you again, Bartu. Yeah, thank you, Jess. Okay, so while Klaus gets set up here, uh, there we go. Hello, Klaus. Um, Hi, I'll just everyone. give a really, really short introduction. So Klaus is a research assistant at the University of Konstanz, and Klaus will be introducing the Big Blue Button API as an example integration for NextCloud. So thank you so much for joining us today, Klaus. Um, your presentation uh, should be loaded here, so I will put it up on the screen and I will give you presenter controls. There you go. Happy to have you. Thank you, Jess. Awesome to be here. And uh, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to talk about you today about my Big Blue Button integration for next powders. And I will give you a brief um, introduction to the Big Blue Button API so that you are able to integrate BBB into your own application at the end of this talk. I hope that works. So, um, as just told, I'm an open source developer. I'm pretty active on GitHub and in many organizations, but my main job is at the um, beautiful Bodensee in the south of Germany. Um, but I'm not only living here, I'm also working here at the University of Konstanz. It's directly at the Bodensee, so it's, I think, the third largest uh, lake in Europe. And you can see from the university directly to the lake, so it's really a great place to work there. And my field of research is um, privacy and um, security in this 
distributed systems, especially um, web applications. But I'm also a member of the local Red Cross community, and here at the start of the pandemic, we were looking for a solution, how we can continue our training um, virtually, as many other people too. And um, very quickly, we found um, Big Blue Button, and we were really happy that we found a solution which uh, protects our privacy and uh, works very stable, as you probably everyone knows here. <clears throat> but we had one issue or one demand because we don't want to use an extra front end. So green light was no option for us because um, everyone already has access to an uh, to our cloud. So um, we have a next cloud setup where we have email, we have images and uh, a lot more very specific applications here for our uh, local community. And therefore we want to reuse this interface or integrate Big Blue Button here too, so that everyone with access, so every member um, can create their own rooms and um, also um, adjust the permission on the let's say next cloud level group management level. So, but what is next cloud? Um, next cloud is a self-hosted content collaboration platform. Um, it's at least in uh, Europe pretty popular with more than 400,000 installations and 20 million users. Um, it supports uh, real-time collaboration but the root was really secure file sharing. And from there on, it extended to an alternative to Google Docs, for example, or Microsoft Teams and so on. Um, it's completely open source and really community driven. This means even the enterprise modules are open source. So you can hack into everything and um, adjust it to your needs, even in the enterprise section. I think also it's a great example for how or how um, open source business can be su successful and um, it's a pleasure to use because it's also um, very focused on security, usability and so on. But enough advertisement and um, how is my integration looking? So this is basically the administration uh, view. You have only a list of rooms and you get very quickly an overview about the configuration of each room. So for example, in the access column, you see directly which access mode every room has. No surprise, you can configure every room um, and I hope it's large enough for you to see. Um, as probably every front end, we have the URL. Um, as a special goodie, um, we have here a QR code, which can be enlarged if you click on it. And so you can easily scan it with your phone and use the room on your mobile phone, um, or you can copy it and put it on your flyer or something. And the other options are pretty yeah, common. And Interest, the interesting part is probably here in the access mode, because now here you can use the full functionality of, for example, Nextcloud, because you can really select who has access to the room. So for example, single users or groups or whatever, and you can just restrict here. Um, you can also select that only people with Nextcloud account can join or a waiting room or password or what you like. Um, if you scroll down, then you have the list of moderators. And so this means those people will join this moderator access in um, Big Blue Button. But we have a special mode, which is called admin. So this means admins are able to change the configuration of, of the room, but it ha they have the same, um, um, same skills in the room than a normal moderator. Um, something which I think Greenlight doesn't have is uh, moderator access via URL. So this means if you invite someone to the room or for example, you want to um, bootstrap a session with someone external and you are not attending the session so that you can upgrade them to a moderator, you can share the moderator URL with them and um, everyone with knowledge of that URL is a moderator in the room. 
Um, the last three options are also a bit special. And um, so we have the listen only option means um, if you disable this option, um, there is no listen only mode in Big Blue Button. So um, if you know or you want that everyone is discussing discussing in the session, um, then you can disable this option and so everyone um, can directly contribute in the group and you don't need to leave the call and join again and so on and so on. And uh, starting from Big Blue Button version 2.3, you can also skip the media check. So if you're a power user and you know everything is set up correctly, you can uh, check the checkbox and skip that option. We have also an option for a clean layout. So this means um, if the room is started, the uh, list of users and also the chat um, area is hidden and um, yeah, you have more place for the presentation and webcam, which is really nice in some situa situations. For the configuration um, side, it's also pretty straightforward. You have the um, API URL, the secret, and then maybe something more special is the use Nextcloud theme in Big Blue Button. This means in Nextcloud, you can set a default color or a primary color. And default, this is this blue, bluish color. And um, if your company is the main color red, you can change that to red. And for example, the bar at the top is then in red. And um, if you start a room from Big Blue Button, then all labels are also red, for example. Um, down below, they have also the ability to add an um, URL shortener, so our own service, for example, because usually your cloud URL is cloud um, dot your company dot com or something, which is pretty long. And additionally, um, there's also a longer path for the app or because my integration is an app and uh, I uh, need to have some or from Nextcloud, I'm required to have some path or a longer path, let's say it that way. So you can use here um, an URL shortener to get very short URLs. And you can restrict, for example, the room creation to um, groups or single users and restrict, for example, how many rooms they can create and so on and so on, which is especially useful in, for example, or for schools and um, similar use cases. <clears throat> If you'd like to start a room, you can just directly open the link from the um, from the admin page or a room overview, um, or you you are going to one of the files which you want to start the room with, so as presentation, and um, click the context menu, and then you select a room, and the room is started directly with that file. And um, all files which are supported by the blue button are supported. So this means PDF images and so on and so on. But um, on the downside, this only works if the room hasn't started yet. So you need, for example, or you need to check the box that the room can only start with a moderator because um, Big Blue Button doesn't allow to add a presentation afterwards. So that would be a nice enhancement, but I guess currently the focus is on other future, which is totally fine. Another thing or another possibility to start a room is to store the room URL as URL file in your next cloud, um, because um, this has the advantage that you have your session files. So for example, if you're a math teacher, you have all your math stuff involved in one folder, and there you can put also your um, room URL file, and then you can just open the folder for the lesson, and there you can also directly start in the room and the good thing is if you have, for example, desktop synchronization, it's also on your desktop and you don't have to look through your bookmarks or similar stuff. Here you have a screenshot with the adapted uh, theme. So this means, in, as you can see in the um, presentation window, um, we have a, a screenshot of the next cloud we used here in the example. So the primary color is red. And as you can see, all the buttons are now red too. And the background from the um, presentation area is now this dark gray, which is closer to the next cloud theme. And you can see also on the left, uh, my little avatar is there as well. 
course, if um, Nextcloud is, or if the user is having their avatar, this is also used in Nextcloud. So it's getting closer and closer and the switch between the Nextcloud and the big blue button is not that big anymore. If you now want to try it and you think it's a good thing and you want to look into it in more detail, you can just go to the Nextcloud App Store. So just search in your favorite uh, search engine for big blue button integration, uh, Nextcloud or something like that. And there should be the, the, um, the first hit should be my application. You can also directly go to the App Store in your next slide and search there for the Big Blue Button integration and install it from there. Or if you're a developer, for example, you can go to my GitHub page and download from there. There's also an install instruction and more information for common issues, for example. If you want to contribute, um, please check out our contribution guidelines. So you can help us with uh, reporting bugs, contributing code, translation, promoting is very important. And also for companies, and sometimes um, it's good to sponsor something. As you can see on the left side, um, already uh, a few companies and universities, schools, etc., did it and, and they contributed there for some nice feature. And as you can see in the left uh, screenshot, um, already nearly 4,000 uh, people downloaded the application. So there's really a market for this uh, integration and it's used by many people, as I also know from feedback. So, but how was it possible to integrate um, this application pretty fast? So the first version was just a few rooms and so on was done in one to two days. So I think that's pretty good. And um, this was only possible because BigBlueButton has a nice um, API. And to be honest, um, BigBlueButton is useless without a front end because it only provides the API to bootstrap everything. Um, it's a REST API um, with different actions. So for example, um, the most common one or which you need um, for sure, if you want to create a room, is the create and join action. So create creates the room with the default or with your configured config, um, with your configured settings, and um, join allows them to join the user, so to set the um, display name and so on and so on. <clears throat> Every action is also having uh, different parameters. Some are required as usual, and a lot of them are optional. So, for example, if you want to create a room, you have to provide the room name, a meeting ID, which is used to identify the room, and you have to provide a um, password for normal users and ones for moderator. If you don't do this, um, there's a password generated by Big Blue Button, but uh, most of the time it's more convenient to um, define this password. Why um, will we see in a second? Um, so that not everyone can um, create rooms on your um, server and we need some kind of authentication and this is the checksum um, in the next uh, in the big blue button API and the checksum is working as an hash message authentication code or that's what it is actually and this checksum or Mac um, is generated by concatenating the action, the parameters, string, and the secret of Big Blue Button. So this means, for example, if we have the create action, we prepend create to the list or to the string of parameters, for example, at the top, and then we append the secret. You get the secret from the bbb um, minus conf command. And there you can also change it if it got leaked or something, because it's pretty important that this password is kept hidden, because uh, otherwise everyone could create a room. And um, yeah, therefore, or with this schema, you can create um, links for every action here, and then just create a room and join people. So for example, if you want to have an, a waiting room, you can use the is meeting running endpoint to check if the room is already started or not. And then um, in an interval, check this again. And um, only moderators are then able to create a room. And so since every other guest is um, repeatedly checking the is meeting running, 
endpoint, um, they automatically get joined if the room was created. And with this pattern, you can do basically everything. Okay. And um, for the API, for most or for many languages, there are already pre built packages. Um, just Google for your or start page or whatever engine you are using for the language and the blue button API. And I'm sure you've been, you're finding something there. Okay, that was my talk, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Klaus. That was a really fantastic presentation, super informative, and thank you for taking the time to share all of your knowledge with us today. Um, so I see um, a few uh, comments and questions coming in in the chat. So Leon says, nice extension for Nextcloud. Is there an option for the BBB room to display a new presentation from the Nextcloud repository? Can the chat or the shared notes be exported to, oh, he has a lot of questions. Okay, so we'll start with the first one. Is there an option from the BBB room to display a new presentation from the Nextcloud repository? No. Okay, that was an easy one to answer. <laughs> yeah, um, um, if someone knows how this works, um, I'm, I would, I'm glad to implement it, but currently I didn't find a solution for that. Yeah. Okay, um, next question from Leon is, can the chat or the shared notes be exported from the BBB room to Nextcloud? I'm not aware of any big, big blue button API to do that, so that's not possible yet. Okay. And is there a possibility to be directed to any website after the meeting is over? Um, default is to redirect to Nextcloud, so there's no configuration option for that, but it's a nice idea. I will definitely put it on the roadmap. Okay. Uh, fantastic. Um, it looks like there's a few more comments coming in. I'll just run over and doesn't look like there's any comments or questions on the YouTube at the moment. Uh, Bartu, who just presented, said, great presentation, Klaus. We use Nextcloud as well. So that's some awesome uh, crossover there between our two presenters in this session. Um, yeah, it looks like that's about it um, for the questions at the moment. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Klaus, again, for your presentation. And yeah, thank you everyone for attending. Like I said earlier, the recording will be made available at the end of the week. And yeah, follow us on social media at Big Blue Button and remember to tweet about the conference with hashtag Big Blue Button World. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>